example of a classic entrance to a self-filmed video. Hi, Frank. Wow, you got here before I did. <laughs> Welcome. Um, glad to see you again in this format. It's, it's a fun evolution of our profession, and it's an honor to be with you on this journey. It's a blessing to be with you in person, one-on-one, -on -one, but it's a gift that we can maintain our connection even when time, space differ for where we are and circumstance may prevent us from being together at this time. My hope is that I build a relationship with each and every one of you that lasts a lifetime to where we may not be together in person and desire to connect, um, which will just deepen our, our ability to connect when we are face to face and in person. So, welcome. Hi, my name is Lindy. I'm happy to um, be sharing this with you. Even though you're not here, I still feel your presence. You are the motivation behind me having the courage to get in front of the camera and share uh, some information about a science that I'm passionate about. Thank you for your time. So this is a brief video on proprioception and interoception. Um, so when you explore the science of yoga with me, it's not this great exercise and new age fad. To me, I'm constantly pulling on the deeper science of yoga. And my goal is to connect with other professionals who are able to represent this field in a professional, ethical, evidence-based way because this is how I believe that we will move this field forward and make our services, our skills, more available and accessible to the general public, and that means everybody, any and everyone. Um, and also more recognize the value of these services to become more recognized by the mental health industry, the medical industry, um, the government, our educational industries. I, you are welcome to try to convince me otherwise that yoga is just an exercise to me. It is the essence of life. It is, it is everything and anything that we do. The yoga practitioner just refines how we engage in that practice consciously. I can live in this body. I can move through time and space in this body, not aware of anatomical neutral, not aware of down dog, tadasana, child's pose, side angle, and on and on it goes. Um, I can move through this body, not aware of optimal shoulder alignment or optimal spinal alignment. I can go through time and space and that be my expression of asana. Again, there's no do or do not um, within the science of yoga. There is, though, the practice or practice not within the science of yoga. So, um, I will be affected by the quality of how I hold and carry my body through time and space, how I care for her or him. And this is something we have to be mindful of, not only taking on our own responsibility with how we live in our lives, and let's just start physically, um, how I physically hold my body. We are all stepping into a significant leadership position where we become invested in how other people carry themselves and their bodies through time and space, the awareness they have and the accountability that they have in their own bodies. I hope to awaken accountability within your body, or maybe a better term would say to feed and foster the, the self-accountability you have already tapped into just as I hope to do the same for myself. And then I hope to collaborate with you in finding creative ways to foster self-accountability in the bodies of our students. So, proprioception and interoception. Uh, I just wanna say I love it when I have y'all here and I get the feedback and the questions and the input and the insights and the personal experiences um, so know that, that for me in this time, uh, there's a longing for you in my physical proximity. But again, I'm grateful. I'm so grateful that we can connect in this format. All right, thank you. 
So proprioception and interoception, I've got some of my notes here. Um, it's been my experience, and there's evidence out there, that proprioception and interoception are intrinsically strengthened in the practice of yoga asana and yoga pranayama, which is what we see a lot of our general public classes focused on. Yeah, there are meditation classes out there as well, which is great, but, but we can likely all agree that a majority of the public classes we see with yoga deal with asana, body position, and pranayama. Um, pranayama for me is physiological functioning, but the practice of pranayama oftentimes revolves around respiration, the respiratory system, because the respiratory system is a direct link to deeper, autonomic, automatic, neurological functioning in our body. So, um, most classes revolve around asana and pranayama. Um, a lot of my public classes revolve around asana and pranayama because I find it a great way to infiltrate the deeper psyche and the higher goals and intentions of this science of yoga. And you'll hear me go back to this again and again. So, through the practice of yoga, especially yoga asana and yoga pranayama, we develop the sensory systems of proprioception and interoception. And yes, I said the sensory systems. So when you think of the senses, we often think of five senses. Taste, sight, which predominates a lot of what the brain interprets, smell, olfactory, what we hear, the auditory, and touch tactile. These are the five primary senses. But it's said that proprioception and interoception are sixth and seventh or additional senses. So proprioception is essentially our ability to know where our body is in space, to sense movement, to sense balance, it deals with coordination, so on and so forth. So you might be able to see what my hand is doing behind me, but my eyes are focused on the camera in front of me. And so I can't see with my eyes what my hand is doing, but I can feel, I can feel within my mind, within my body, the sensory receptors in the muscle fibers, the muscle tissues themselves can tell me that without having to look at it, my right hand, I'm kind of wagging at the wrist, I'm wiggling the fingers. Right? So I can feel my body doing that. It's really fascinating. People who have substantial damage within the proprioceptive system, if they're not looking at their body part, it's like jello. And this is an extreme example, right? And when they look at their right arm, they can stabilize it while the rest of the body kind of trembles around. When they look at the left arm, they can stabilize it while the rest of the body trembles around. This is an extreme example. Um, other damage to the proprioceptive system re it involves poor balance. An important one, though, is oftentimes we uh, twist or we sprain a joint. This can damage the sensory receptors within the joint itself, which could lead to greater instability of that joint. And I, I have an example. My left ankle, I, broke, I sprained it that many times in my life. My yoga asana practices help me really strengthen uh, uh, the action in the lateral or outer ankle, which tended to be very weak, which is helpful. But I noticed, especially as I've gotten to know more about proprioception, I've noticed that there is a little bit of a disconnect. I'm more likely to roll this ankle than I am my right ankle. One, it, it is somewhat due to the past damage has caused the ankle to rotate, or the, the toes to rotate medially, the ankle to rotate medi medially a little bit, which makes me more susceptible to catching the lateral aspect of my ankle and rotating it, twisting it. But there's also just been times where like, the awareness wasn't there and I just stepped off a curb and a curb and it, it just it just went under. And so it's been a fascinating thing for me to kind of play on, you know, which is that it's likely a combination of both, the structural shift. So the alignment of my ankle has shifted from honestly 40 plus sprains in this ankle. 
uh, a couple of them pretty substantial. And, and then it, there's also this, oh yeah, there, there's less awareness in this ankle than there was, and then there was in my right ankle, even though with my practice I strengthened that awareness, but some of those receptors have likely been damaged to where they can't give my brain the information um, of what's going on in the ankle in, in a quick enough time to prevent me from rolling it. But, um, so that's proprioception, knowing where our body is in space, uh, sensing movement, coordination, balance. Balance is also contributed to by the vestibular system in our ears. This is, we have this vestibular system within our ears that helps us balance. People who have issues with vertigo sometimes have issues in their vestibular system. An example here is feeling nauseous if you're on a long car ride and you're reading or you're looking at your phone and you're not looking out the window because your vestibular system senses movement but the eyes sense something static and still and it makes the body just, just feel a little bit nauseous or queasy or out of sorts in a sense. Interoception, interception. This is an internal perception. Awareness of our inner body states. For example, when you feel hungry, or you have to go to the bathroom, right? But it's likely many of you through your practice of yoga asana and pranayama are sensing more subtle internal states. You notice that slight nuance on you know, your shoulder pain, you're like, it's right in this area versus my shoulder hurts. We begin to pick up on these subtle nuances in our bodies. I, um, I realized early on how um, aggravating <laughs> a yogi may be to somebody within the medical profession when they ask us where it hurts and we can give them a dissertation on every little <laughs> sensation we feel instead of my hip hurts, it's rather I notice this, this sensation is pulling on my inner hip joint and this numbness in the outer hip joint. And then there's a slight strain right beneath my sit bone. Most medical professionals aren't used to dealing with people that have that kind of body awareness, that kind of um, proprio and interoception. Uh, so I, I, find it, I find it funny. I think as we continue to grow our profession, and educate people on their bodies so they can better assess what's going on in their bodies and then better inform their healthcare practitioner, we will see a radical evolution of how we self-care. Because so often in the West, healthcare is something we put on somebody else's shoulders. Well, my doctor didn't fix this. My chiropractor didn't fix this. My nutritionist didn't fix this. What are we implementing in our day-to-day -day practices? Because that does so much more than some radical surgery or some radical pharmaceutical intervention. So through our practice, we develop proprioception and interoception. We can educate our students and our clients on this. So they are more informed. They are more empowered to go, my wrist hurts. Okay, where might that be coming from? And what might that be causing, right? So wrist pain, if they really begin to pay attention to it, they may notice that their shoulder is really frozen. And so they may begin to realize that, oh, there's a connection. Wrist pain may be coming from some shoulder misalignment. Shoulder misalignment can impinge blood flow, neurological functioning, and cause discomfort. So they begin to pay attention to where the pain may be coming from and where it may be going. So issues in my wrist, may cause me to reduce movement in my fingers, which may cause my fingers to become stiff, uncomfortable, numb, painful. And of course, the longer I go on avoiding these areas, the more my muscles will tighten around this pattern, and this will become more and more of my new norm, which in time is going to create counter effects in the body. The body is going to seek to compensate since Lindy's right arm doesn't want to move as much anymore, left arm's gonna start doing more, the body's gonna to begin to favor this side, which is gonna put more stress and strain in other parts of the body. So these are things that we get to inspire within ourselves and inspire within our students. And 
the journey of this studentship, I hope, is lifelong. There's so much to learn about ourselves. There's so much to learn about the human body. And as we dive into deeper layers of understanding, new information reveals itself. And we have a new capacity to conceptualize that information, to understand that information. So going a little bit more into proprioception. Um, so again, knowing where our body is in space, sensing movement, coordination, balance. Uh, think, of, think of throwing a ball. When I throw a ball, I'm not having to watch my arm throw the ball. Maybe initially, I, I played softball for years and years, so I forget some of the initial training drills. But maybe initially, that isn't a coaching technique. They have you hold the, the ball and watch yourself through it. Maybe they start you there, that may be a good technique. Um, so throwing the ball without having to look at it. Being able to, to detect texture beneath your feet. Um, so standing on, let's say, a bed of grass versus standing on sand, versus standing on a tile floor, um, versus standing on concrete, or here's a fun one, walking barefoot across a rocky pavement. <laughs> then your proprioception is really on point. These are good exercises to just see where you are. If you've ever walked on an uneven terrain with bare feet, if you go a little bit slower, there's a little bit, there's a Qigong method keep the weight in the back foot and slowly sense with the front, front foot and then step in. Keep the weight in that back foot as you sense with the next foot and then step in. Apparently this is how elephants walk because they are such large, magnificent creatures that they really cannot afford a misstep. You or I may be able to twist an ankle a few times in our life. An animal such as an elephant or a horse does not have that luxury, so they move through space with a little bit of a different intention. Um, but that might be a fun exercise. Take your shoes off, get out and walk around and just notice the different textures beneath your feet. This is another gift of our practice of yoga. We practice barefoot in the field of yoga asana because we are just as intent on exercising the joints, nourishing the bones, exercising the muscles within our feet and ankles as we are the rectus abdominis and the gluteus maximus and the pectoralis major, right? We are invested in every subtle nook and cranny of the body. And when we practice barefoot, our foot has to adapt and grip and pay attention in a different way than it does in tennis shoes with kind of a contained static environment. Um, da, da, da. So proprioception can be weakened or damaged. Um, so can be weak. People with poor balance, if we're not exercising our proprioception, how can we expect us to have a strong proprioceptive capacity? Basketball players, as an example, will run drills. They'll have to run the drill of uh, 30 layouts. Layups. <laughs> layouts is gymnastics, another example. But 30 layups before they have to leave practice, right? On both sides. And the idea is that as they go 30 times dribbling and going up and putting, you know, hitting the ball in a certain spot within the square above the hoop, you know, they build that coordination, they build that proprioception. It becomes innate and automatic. Dancers do this, gymnasts do this, right? Uh, they can throw back handsprings in their sleep with enough conditioning. That's conditioning proprioception. Yes, I don't recommend that you teach your clients and your students how to tumble, but in our practice, we're building proprioception, awareness of where our body is in space. In Warrior Two, we have our students, we bring, the, we bring mindfulness to what that back shoulder is doing, because oftentimes the visual system governs things, and they're looking and they're reaching ahead, and they're like, out of sight, out of mind, and we go, you look great, you look wonderful, breathe in. Breathe out. Notice your back shoulder or your right shoulder. Take your right shoulder onto your back. If you're not sure, look at it. Take your shoulder on your back. If you're not sure, turn your elbows up so we create the body position so it's like, oh, I can feel that. And you say, notice. Notice what's happening in your shoulders. Keep that action going as you extend your elbows once again and gaze to the front finger. Notice if you drop that back shoulder. It's not a problem. Just roll it onto your back once again. Breathe in. 
Breathe out. So we help foster that proprioception for our students. We help teach and train them. We say things like in Warrior Two, we have them be mindful of the back ankle. We may say something, you're gonna see me move out of, out of the, the shot for a little bit, but pay attention to my ankle. So we may encourage them instead of dumping, we may say lift the inner ankle, ground the pinky toe side of the foot. And if they're like, what the hell is Lily talking about? I may give them a quick demo and say, hey, watch me. Watch me right here. I'm gonna lift my inner ankle and ground the, I'm gonna lift my inner ankle and ground the outer pinky edge of my foot. Watch me. I'm gonna lift my inner ankle and ground the outer pinky edge of my foot in three, two, one. Now, you, just like that. And then I watch to observe to make sure that they're getting this and that they're replicating it. I'm not going to say, yeah, you got it, if half the class doesn't make a change. I'm not going to shame them. As an educator, I go, hmm, okay, that didn't land. How can I find another way to explain this to them or to articulate it to them? So we help train that proprioception in their bodies. What is your body doing in space? It shouldn't just be warrior two, okay? Peaceful warrior, okay? We're going to side angle now, yeah, okay? I am constantly giving anatomical, anatomical cues, alignment and action, and oftentimes I pick one or two key emphasis for my class, and then I repeat, repeat, repeat around it, because then they have a better ability to retain that information versus me telling them about every piece of their body in the class, or they may be overwhelmed and discouraged. I may pick an area, like today we're gonna to talk about the shoulder girdle and the shoulder alignment, and keeping the collarbones broad and the muscles in the upper back active and engaged in every pose. I'm gonna walk you through that, all right? You're gonna notice our asana labs explore key action around universal principles, and it's meant to introduce the key action, apply the key action, and then challenge the key action. So you'll see this again and again, and um, we'll talk more about this as we go along. So ways to strengthen proprioception, being able to know where your body is in space and what your body is doing. Another example is think about the clothes on your body right now. I can feel the, the band of my waist, of my yoga pants. I can feel the, the texture of my shirt on my body. I have a, a, a loose sports bra on underneath. Proprioception taught me about the interoceptive experience of a tight sports bra. I began to notice that tight constriction on the external thoracic region created an internal experience of tension, anxiety, uh, agitation. And so as I tuned into that, I changed what I was wearing. And my life was a lot better. Little subtle things we can do. Other ways to strengthen proprioception is cross body movement. Even just marching in place, touching alternate hand to alternate knee. This is also a great way to reawaken the brain, although I still feel one of the best ways to re reawaken the brain is to lie down. Get your heart and your head in the same plane. Get your heart and your legs in the same plane, or maybe the legs slightly elevated. But cross body movement is a great way to build proprioception. Also cueing your students into the sensations of their bodies and maybe even directing them to look. All right, so back to this example of warrior two, I'm gonna open my, I'm gonna shorten my V here. Right, a lot of times the hand they're looking to may be open and active and the back hand is just hanging in space and you tell them you're doing great. Look at your back hand for a moment. Oh, and they, they can see it with their eyes then they can create an action because we're more trained to, to respond to what we're seeing than what we're feeling. So they go, oh, my hands are limp. And they engage and they stretch and they open their fingers and you go, that's great, keep that going. Now turn and gaze to the front finger again. Now notice how the back hand feels, breathe in, breathe out. 
You could build a class, you could build a workshop, all on proprioception if you so choose. So closing the eyes and poses is another way to strengthen proprioception. Stretch your arms overhead, breathe in, breathe out, and if appropriate, close your eyes or soften the gaze. Some students may not always be fully comfortable closing their eyes completely. Um, this could just be they're uncomfortable coming to yoga for the first time or the first few times so they don't trust you or the science yet. Uh, past trauma can impact somebody's comfort in closing their eyes. So we always want to provide options. Instead of saying, you close your eyes, everyone has to close their eyes, we're like, close your eyes if it's comfortable. Otherwise, maybe a soft gaze where the eyes are going to be half open, the gaze kind of moves somewhere down. And these students, when you give them stepping stones, in time they're going to build trust with you, and in time they're going to feel more comfortable perhaps closing their eyes. Um, and when you build trust like that, you begin to help people heal on deeper levels than just the physical. Ways to strengthen proprioception. Um, Cross-body movement, eyes closed, balancing, Polymetric movements, this is where you, you kind of do things in jumping spurts, where you maximize force in the body and then relax. The goal is gradually to increase power as we build strength in our body. Our mind better sen senses what's going on in the muscles. When our muscles are very weak, they're very flaccid, they're very unconscious, right? Many of you will hear the story of my um, Serious medical condition, Nasadol. No ass at all. Although I've changed that story. Um, but a number of years ago, I had some very serious psoas issues and low back pain. And I realized that I had, all my life, I've had very weak, very inactive glute muscles. So when I began to really target conditioning my glute muscles, I had to think like crazy. I had to focus and concentrate on getting my glutes to fire because there was such a neurological disconnect. With practice, I built that neurological connection to where now I will catch myself in the grocery store gently engaging my glutes or whatever the situation may be, the, 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 the location may be where I may be at. Um, but I've, I've changed that instead of going, oh, well, I just wasn't born with a butt. You know, I begin to recognize the value of glute strength in relation to harmony within my body, reduction of pain in my body. So I began to, to consciously change that. So building strength, the brain suddenly is aware of the deltoid or the biceps or the triceps. The brain is suddenly aware of the abdominal muscles. And as we build this awareness of these superficial muscles, this is one of the anatomical terms, as we build awareness of the superficial muscles, the muscles closer to the surface, gradually we become aware of the deeper muscles. Like I can tell when my quadratus lumborum, these are two little short muscles in the low back, very powerful muscles that basically connect the bottom of your ribcage to the top of your pelvis. Bottom of your ribcage, top of your pelvis. These muscles, I can tell when they're aggravated with me. I can tell when one side is more aggravated than another. So deeper muscles and then deeper muscles. So that proprioception will, will, will feed into itself and then it has this close relationship with interoception. Uh, awareness of our inner body states. Again, I use the example of being feeling hungry or having to go to the bathroom. And so here's an interesting thing, is that as we develop interoception, it also de uh, it develops our um, emotional recognition and regu regulation, our problem solving, uh, our self-understanding, our social understanding. So think about this, maybe I have to go to the bathroom really bad, but I'm in a public place. Maybe there's a line for the bathroom, and instead of just pissing everyone off and pushing past them, I'm having to regulate the need to go to the bathroom while also acknowledging my social setting, my social situation. And we can all probably think of people in our lives that we would appreciate a lot more if they had more of a social awareness. These may be the people that um, 
are quick to be loud and obnoxious in public places, whining or feeling as if the only person who suffers in this world is them. Um, so interoception uh, is an effective way of building self-awareness. And you get to do this. this. We get to use the physical body as a mechanism to strengthen self-awareness. And this gets me really, really excited. Um, so, uh, so awareness of the inner body states. This is a sensory process of receiving, assessing. Pardon me as I check my filming. Okay, I'm still filming. Alrighty, so interoception is a sensory process of receiving, assessing, and appraising, appraising, so assessing, internal signals of the body. Um, essentially controlling, uh, so the, the sensory process, this is con uh, conscious and unconscious. So the blinking that you've seen me doing, this is part of my interoception, but it's largely unconscious, right? My um, my nervous system is detecting when the eyes are starting to dry a little bit, and so it signals this automatic process of, of blinking. The same is true of breathing. Um, interoception also comes into play when we flinch, right? So we see something, an object flying at us out of the corner of our eye, we may flinch to block it. This is part of our interoception. Um, it's a sense, it's the internal state of our body. Again, I mentioned this is, this is another sensory system beyond just sight, taste, touch, sound, and smell. Uh, the brain is using interceptive information to regulate vital functions like heart rate, body, temp body temperature, thirst, and hunger. It's a type of self-regulation, of self-harmonizing. Many of us, many of our students, many Americans, we've pushed that down, right? We may feel hungry and realize, or the time, push it down, push it away. So we begin to interrupt that internal feedback. Um, we may begin to feel sad, so we numb it. We feel anger, and we numb it. We shut it down. Instead of allowing ourselves to be present with these things, not fly by the seat of our pants, not fly off the handle the second we notice anger or frustration or agitation, but be able to notice it, sense it, and pause and assess. Where is this coming from? Where is this going? How can I utilize this information in a way to create a most harmonious situation for myself? So maybe it is somebody who's saying something annoying and it's not gonna benefit us to punch them in the face. <laughs> but perhaps it's somebody who's getting too close in a situation where they have us isolated, they're beginning to threaten our physical proximity. That is not a time to shut down your anger or your fear or your frustration. We need to be attuned to those things so we can act as needed and keep ourselves safe. Yeah? So interoception. There's the unconscious aspect of it, but then we can consciously engage it. And we do this a lot in the practice of yoga asana and yoga pranayama. Ways that we develop in internal interception, internal perception. Ways that we develop that is through body scanning. What is my right hand doing? What is my left hand doing? What is my right leg doing? What is my left leg doing? Is my spine neutral? Am I rounded? Am I sinking to one side? Where am I? So body scanning. A lot of times instructors will do this in Shavasana. They'll guide people from head to toe in relaxing their forehead and softening their eyes. Rest the bridge of your nose, your teeth, your tongue, and your gums. And skate, help our, guide our students through a body scan from head to toe. That was one of the game changers for me in yoga asana early on. It's the first time, well, the, hand, the handful of first times I experienced shavasana. I'd never paid attention to my body like that. I had a teacher who walked us through the body scan. I never had noticed how much tension I was holding in different parts of my body. Um, so that was one of the initial gifts of my practice. Uh, one of the early gifts that lit a fire in me, I continues to burn strong 20 plus years later, 
Um, deep breathing helps awaken interoception. Again, we tend to dissociate from our body. And a lot of this can happen in the area of the thoracic diaphragm. Think of the thoracic diaphragm as basically a beautiful parachute-like muscle at the, the base of the rib cage. It's our primary muscle of respiration. It is slightly higher on the right side due to the liver, slightly lower on the left side due to the heart. But as we inhale that thoracic diaphragm, as we inhale, it contracts and it flattens or moves down. This is where we get this idea of belly breath. The thoracic cavity increases volume, pushing on the volume of the abdominal cavity and expands. As we exhale, the thoracic diaphragm relaxes and goes back to neutral. It's with the use of secondary respiratory muscles that we squeeze more out. Secondary respiratory muscles, we'll talk more about later on. But the point here, deep breathing with the development of interoception. As I breathe in, I begin to move this muscle more, which means in my abdominal cavity, there's more stimulation. There's more massage, there's more manipulation, utilizing that term in a, in a positive way, and it awakens sensation. Many of your students will find that their cravings change from their practice of yoga. They begin to notice what that three liters of Coca-Cola and five hamburgers or whatever it may be, two packs of cookies, I don't know. They begin to feel it, they're like, wow. Oh. And granted, they may have felt it before, but just as like, oh, I'm uncomfortable, I'm sleepy, I'm gonna unbutton my pants and go to bed. They're gonna begin to notice more subtle sensation of what that feels like. They're going to begin to notice what a wholesome meal feels like. More water in their system. Um, whole grains are going to notice the, the effects that that has. Even unconsciously, they notice that. And a lot of students, their diet begins to shift their practice of yoga, asana, and pranayama. Not because they're getting into the shoulds and shouldn'ts of what they should and shouldn't be eating, but because their, their cravings change. There's more blood flow. Uh, to the taste buds and the uh, salivary glands in the mouth, so they're they're more aware of what's going on with, with the taste of their food. And again, they feel the food in their abdomen in a different way, or their digestive tract, I should say, in a different way. Touching the body and then guiding the mind there is a way to build interoception. So having students place a hand over their heart center, that proprioceptive touch can guide an internal experience. They notice warmth around, over the, the, the area of the heart center. Um, it can attune them to how they're feeling, the phenomena of the chest, right? And so the chest may feel tight or open and spacious or excitatory or heavy and collapsed. So the physical touch can help guide the mind there. And we can also have them, them look to the area of the body as well and, and all of these things begin to come together in this beautiful orchestra of taking students into a deeper understanding of their bodies, their alignment, and their value and worth. You will hear me talk about proprioception and interoception many times over in the course of our brief program together. Um, and for those of you that I have the honor and the benefit of getting to know for a lifetime, you'll hear me talk about it quite a bit and how excited I am. But cognition isn't just this little mass within the head known as our brain. Cognition is everywhere. I know what my hand is doing without having to look at it. I know I can feel these things. Cognition is in my we have awareness, we have, we have a brilliant mind in our gut and in our digestive tract. We are helping our students invoke this understanding, tap into a higher, a deeper, or more expansive uh, intelligence and hopefully wisdom. I believe this is a powerful way to make the world a better place. Not for me to go out and shout and scream at the people that I don't agree with to help inspire within any, everyone a greater sense of self-worth, self-awareness, self-capacity, and ultimately self-accountability. 
It's an honor to work with y'all, to get to share this journey together. I look forward to learning from y'all. Thank you for your time. Until we meet again. Namaste.